It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search it out is the glory of kings. This is the Message to Kings podcast. Episode 209, King Zedekiah and the Prophet Jeremiah. After King Nebuchadnezzar trashed and looted Jerusalem, after he killed Jehoiakim and deposed King Jehoiachin, and the innocents and the best of the country were either killed or taken prisoner, the prophet Jeremiah wandered around Jerusalem, terrified after the previous day's events, wondering about the future of his country. His torment led him to God, like always, and more words flowed forth. And at this point, the new king Zedekiah was announced, and his government was already starting to form. And Jeremiah was more than concerned as he surrounded himself by fools. Struggling with the visions in the future that lay before him, God only confirmed Jeremiah's greatest fears. Jeremiah 24 After Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and his officials, the skilled workers, and the artisans of Judah were carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the Lord showed me two baskets of figs placed in the front of the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, like those that ripen early, and the other figs, other basket had very bad figs, so bad they could not be eaten. Then the Lord asked me, What do you see, Jeremiah? Figs, I answered. The good ones are very good, but the bad ones are very bad and cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Like these good figs, I regard as good the exiles from Judah, whom I sent away from this place to the land of the Babylonians. My eyes will watch over them, for they are good. I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know me that I am that I am the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their God, for they will return to me with all their heart. But like the bad figs, which are so bad they cannot be eaten, says the Lord, so will I deal with Zedekiah, king of Judah, his officials, and the survivors from Jerusalem, whether they remain in this land or live in Egypt. I will make them abhorrent and an offense to all the kingdoms of the earth, an approach and a byword, a curse, and an object of ridicule wherever I banish them. I will send the sword, famine, and plague against them until they were destroyed from the land I gave them to their ancestors. The king Zedekiah, he set up his throne with the empowerment of King Nebuchadnezzar. A wicked man seated on the throne now, and he's, we're going to learn later that he is filled with the fear of man. We have interesting details added about his character and something interesting to note about this time. He's wicked, but there's a controlling aspect of him, of his ungodly friends that perverted justice in his eyes. He's young and foolish and surrounded by fools, yet he has an amazing prophet to rely on in Jeremiah that he likes to actually hear from at times, but he's so quickly turned away by his sin and his ungodly influences. Here's what Joe, you know, Josephus, I read enough of his works by now to call him by a nickname. This is what he says about Zedekiah. Now Zedekiah was 20 and one years old when he took the government and had the same mother with his brother Jehoiakim, but he was a despiser of justice and his duty. For truly those of the same age with him were wicked about him, and the whole multitude did what unjust and insolent things they pleased. For which reason the prophet Jeremiah came often to him, protested to him, and insisted that he must leave off his impieties and transgressions and take care of what was right, and neither give ear to the rulers among whom were wicked men. So Nebuchadnezzar pulled away all the intelligentsia of the day out of Jerusalem, left Israel with an immature king and his fraternity brother elders ruling the land. But yet there was a soft side to the king. But in the end, that soft side really was just his, his that fear of man that controlled him. Yet he was so ruled by his rowdy and distrustful friends. Now as Zedekiah himself, while he heard the prophet speak, he believed him and agreed to everything as true. And this is more of what Josephus is saying. And supposing it was for his advantage... But then his friends perverted him 
and dissuaded him from what the prophet advised and obliged him to do what they pleased. Do you catch that? That Zedekiah believed Jeremiah at times and supposed his words to be truth for his benefit, but like the seed scattered on the rock or the rocky places, it was quickly snatched up and taken from him. His wayward heart is addressed time and time again by Jeremiah. Another thing about Zedekiah's court was their ungodliness. We know they worshipped idols because of those encounters that Ezekiel had. And they didn't walk with the Lord. There's the defiling of the temple. There's false worship. And we have those false prophets walking around the land as well. His friends, now advisors, worshipped other gods and filled the land with their priests and allowed them to have influence over the kingdom. Jeremiah 27. Early in the reign of Jedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord said to me. Make a yoke out of straps and crossbars and put it on your neck. Then send word to the kings of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Sidon through the envoys that have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah, king of Judah. Give them a message from their, for their masters and say, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Tell this to your masters. With my great power and outstretched arm, I have made the earth and its people and the animals that are on it. I give it to anyone I please. Now I give all your countries into the hands of my servant Nebuchadnezzar. I will make even the wild animals subject to him. All nations will serve him and his son and his grandson until the time for his land comes. Then many nations and great kings will subjugate him. If, however, any nation or kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and bow its neck under his rule, I will punish that nation with a sword, famine, and plague, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your mediums, or your sorcerers who tell you, you will not serve the king of Babylon. They prophesy lies to you that will only serve to remove you far from your lands. I will banish you, and you will perish." But if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let that nation remain in its own land to till it and to live there, declares the Lord. I gave the same message to Zedekiah, king of Judah. I said, bow your neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, serve him and his people, and you will live. Why will you and your people die by the sword, famine, and plague with which the Lord has threatened any nation that will not serve the king of Babylon? Do not listen to the words of the prophets who say to you, You will not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy lies to you. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. They are prophesying lies in my name. Therefore I will banish you, and you will perish, both you and the prophets who prophesy to you. Then I said to the priest and all these people, This is what the Lord says. Do not listen to the prophets who say, Very soon now the articles from the Lord's house will be brought back from Babylon. They're prophesying lies to you. Do not listen to them. So the king of Babylon and you will live. Why should this city become a ruin? If they are prophets and have the word of the Lord, let them plead with the Lord Almighty that the articles remaining in the house of the Lord in the palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem not be taken to Babylon. For this is what the Lord Almighty says about the pillars, the bronze sea, the movable stands, and the other articles that are left in the city, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, did not take away when he carried Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, along with all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about the things that are left in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah in Jerusalem. They will be taken to Babylon, and there they will remain until the day I come for them, declares the Lord. Then I will bring them back and restore them to this place. Taking us back to some confrontations in northern Israel, we have a confrontation between prophet Jeremiah and a false prophet. The false prophet he confronts is Hananiah. And keep in mind what Jeremiah looks like at the moment with straps and crossbars in this next scene. He's a walking cross. And the message is humility and meekness like a lamb and you will find victory. Instead, a false prophet of sorts, a witch, arrives on the scene and rebukes Jeremiah and violently confronts him. Jeremiah 28. In the fifth month of the same year, the fourth year, early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azar, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon, and within two years I will bring back to this place all the articles of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, removed from here and took to Babylon. 
I will also place back in this place Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and all other exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, declares the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. He said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied by bringing articles from the Lord's house and all the exiles back to this place from Babylon. Nevertheless, listen to what I have to say in your hearing and the hearing of all the people. From early times, the prophets who preceded you and me have prophesied war, disaster, and plague against many countries and great kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. He said before all the people, This is what the Lord says. In the same way I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, off the neck of all the nations within two years. At this, the prophet Jeremiah went on his way. Jeremiah, who was holding a crossbar of sorts over his back with with straps, he must have been in pain and really hurt from this because I picture some violence as he tore this off of him, throwing him down and breaking the wood and potentially whipping him with the straps. Jeremiah wasn't a real tough guy, but I mean, he was probably beaten here with these straps and he probably ran in serious pain, but God recalled him. Jeremiah 28, 12. After the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go and tell Hananiah, this is what the Lord says. You have broken a wooden yoke, but in its place you will be given a yoke of iron. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will put an iron yoke on the necks of all these nations to make them serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they will serve him. And I will even give him control over the wild animals. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I'm about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year you're going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah the prophet died. This should have been a sign and wonder to the powers that be. But Zedekiah didn't rule the land. His wicked friends did. Two months after this prophecy, the false prophet was dead. The message is those that mock the cross. The cross which gave Jesus and his children victory over sin. And grave must not be mocked or abused. To mock the death of our Savior is agreeing with death itself and agreeing with the same spirit that put him in the grave. Jeremiah continues, this time encouraging the survivors in Babylon and ending it with hope. Jeremiah 29, this is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent to Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priest. The prophets and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have daughters and sons and increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city in which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to you to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. You may say, the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon, 
But this is what the Lord says about the king who sits on David's throne and all the people who remain in this city, your fellow citizens who do not go with you into exile. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I will send the sword, famine, and plague against them, and I will make them like figs that are so bad they cannot be eaten. I will pursue them with the sword, famine, and plague, and make them abhorrent to all the nations and kingdoms of the earth, a curse and a ho- object of horror, of scorn and reproach among all the nations where I drive them. For they have not listened to my words, declares the Lord, words that I have sent to them again and again by my servants, the prophets, and you exiles have not listened either, declares the Lord. Therefore, hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about Ahab, son of Kaloah, Zedekiah, son of Manasseh, who are prophesying lies to you in my name. I will deliver them in the hands of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will put them to death before your very eyes. Because of them, all the exiles from Judah who are in Babylon will use this curse. May the Lord treat you like Zedekiah and Ahab, whom the king of Babylon burned in the fire. For they have done outrageous things in Israel. They have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives, and in my name they have uttered lies, which I did not authorize. I know it, and I am a witness to it, declares the Lord. I mean, after we have this amazing verse, the verse of verses, uh, that I have a future for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, you can't get away from that this season of justice. Um, that, you know, it, Jerusalem is a target for absolute destruction. Um, sinners are being called out. Um, even wicked prophets who are committing horrible sins in the name of God, you know, it, these guys are getting called out by name. Um, that they're going to be actually killed in the fire. Um, it's a season of justice. But in that, like always with these prophets, you've got these wonderful promises within the dark, menacing, judgment prophecies. So, But we conclude this episode uh, with the prophetic riddle. Uh, Josephus pieces some prophecies together from Ezekiel and Jeremiah and makes an interesting statement, which is super interesting. Zedekiah, who I compared to the seed scattered on the rock, is dissuaded by his friends, but further they find fault in the detail and inconsistency of Jeremiah and Ezekiel's prophecies. Zedekiah wants to listen to Jeremiah, but he's you know dissuaded by his friends. While Zedekiah appears to want to listen, he refuses to go against his friends and advisors, filled with the fear of man. He agrees or, or find, agrees with an error that they think they found. Here's what Josephus said. But then his friends perverted him and dissuaded him from what the prophet advised and obliged him to do what they pleased. Zedekiah foretold in Babylon what calamities were coming upon the people, which when he heard, he sent accounts of them to Jerusalem. But Zedekiah did not believe their prophecies for the reason following. It happened that the two prophets agreed with one another in what they said in that all other things that the city should be taken, and Zedekiah himself should be taken captive. But... Ezekiel disagreed with him and said that Zedekiah should not see Babylon, while Jeremiah said to him that the king of Babylon should carry him away thither in bonds. So basically, um, Ezekiel says that um, the city will be taken and Zedekiah, but Zedekiah would never see Babylon. While Jeremiah says the city will be taken, Zedekiah will be captured, but he would be carried to Babylon. Sounds pretty inconsistent. Doesn't sound possible, does it? Ezekiel said Zedekiah would not see Babylon. Jeremiah said he'd be carried there. Do you think this is inconsistent and contradictory? Well, it appears to be. But can you consider any way in which Uh, Both of these could occur. I leave the audience with this prophetic riddle. Answer it, and you're the podcast listener of the day.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of Message to Kings. Feel free to visit the website, messagetokings.com. Share the Facebook page if you want to chat. Email us at messagetokings at gmail.com.